aesthetic qualities of an indie title are, in my opinion, one of the keys to their success. Almost every big indie title I can remember had a distinct associated aesthetic, be it retro inspired like that in Undertale, or minimalist like that in Limbo. For many of these games, although not really Undertale, their aesthetic played a big part in their appeal. They represented not only a niche in terms of story or gameplay, but also in the visual style that they went for, styles that AAA games typically ignored. In talking about the aesthetic of indie games then, I'd like to start with Hotline Miami. Its ultra colourful, neon headache of an aesthetic pairs wonderfully with both the music and with the narrative. That is to say, it's enjoyable, engaging, but also rather unsettling. Particular scenes are unsettling for obvious reasons, but there are details in almost every stage of the game that feel somehow wrong. One of those is the way the maps in the game will sway back and forth as though you are aboard a ship. In short spurts of gameplay, you barely notice, but in long stretches, it can become sickening, particularly for those who are sensitive to it. The scores and multipliers are quite unsettling as well. They are over the top and reward you all the more for doing increasingly horrible things. Ultimately, beyond merely having a distinct aesthetic, the visuals pull their weight in telling the story. Abstract ideas are, if not directly addressed, alluded to throughout this narrative, and for the aesthetic strengths of the game, this narrative becomes a lot more palatable. Hotline Miami's aesthetic carries with it a certain atmosphere, one that is heady, violent, and at times quite disturbing. Perhaps my favourite atmosphere evoked by visual style, however, has to be that of Gunpoint's moody, downtrodden city. I love the backdrops behind each level. Chain link fences, brick buildings and decaying shop fronts all rendered in a slightly pixelated set of muted blues and yellows. If you can't tell already, I've got a bit of a thing for colour schemes. The obvious ones like blue and orange are pretty easy to spot and to pull off, but subtle ones like this are just beautiful and all too rare. The aesthetic properties of the game go further than just pretty backdrops, of course, and react to actions you make in-game. No, I'm not talking about getting red eyes or horns if you kill a bunch of people. That doesn't happen in Gunpoint, by the way. I'm talking about how the visuals switch between two different styles. There's this one here that you'll see most of the time while playing the game, and another as you use the crosslink device that reduces the characters to silhouettes and generally lowers the detail of the level so as to draw more attention to the puzzle elements of the game. It's a simple change, but one that interacts very nicely with the gameplay, encouraging you to ensure you can't be caught by the patrolling guard before you start rewiring the building, or to encourage you to be very quick about it should you face the possibility of being caught. Aesthetics can also be used to reward your progression in the game. While there's certainly something rewarding about a new outfit or a new hat, few games reward you with quite as large a change as that which is offered in N++. I mentioned earlier that I have a thing for colour schemes. Well, N++ has a thing for them too. Just look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? More than just a set of pretty colours though, Metanet Software also have a real knack for clean, minimalist design. Combining the immediate simplicity of pixel art with clean, sharp lines makes for an amazingly good looking game. The visuals also wonderfully match the game itself. Everything in the game has been broken down to its core requirements and polished to hell from there. It just oozes a cool confidence in its visuals, gameplay and even its music selection. For my money, platformers don't get better than this. To close out this video, I'd like to discuss the aesthetic qualities of Hyperlight Drifter. For one, it's pretty. Very pretty. That's nice, but there's more to it. Each area of the game has a distinct aesthetic. Different parts of the world feature different enemies, architecture, colours, and even weather. That's far from uncommon. Plenty of games do as much. But I think Hyperlight Drifter is a particularly great example. One particular aspect that I really love about Hyperlight Drifter is the size of the environments around you, particularly well communicated when you come across the corpse of a titan. For example, on this screen we see a titan's head, and on the next we see its ribcage. Obviously, that doesn't reveal the size of the environment so much as the size of the things that used to inhabit it, but the effect is the same. On that note, I should also mention the environmental storytelling. The narrative, or rather parts of it, are told through the occasional cutscene and conversation, yes, but mostly it's just told by the world you're in, the skeletons that litter the ground, 
the rusting machinery and the townspeople of each area. The really exciting thing for me though is the sort of visual language the game employs. Small symbols littered across the landscape inform you of nearby passages or hidden platforms, and learning this visual language has been one of my favourite parts of the game thus far. In light of that, I'm not actually going to show any footage that might reveal what those symbols look like, as finding that out before playing the game would rob it of a little mystery that's been a real pleasure to experience. A sense of mystery that comes directly from the visuals. Those of you who have played the game will know exactly what I'm talking about. And to those of you that haven't, I definitely recommend giving it a go, because it's quickly becoming one of my favourite games from a visual standpoint. While gameplay trumps all, the visuals of a game have a significant impact on how you interact with the game. Whether it's backing up the narrative or creating an atmosphere, whether it's implemented as a reward or as a puzzle for you to figure out, I love thinking about the aesthetics of games I play. So what are some of your favourite examples? What flavour of eye candy is your favourite? Let me know in the comments below. Cheers, have a good one.